anything wrong, dear? No. No, nothing. I thought I heard something, but it was just the wind. like it came from over there. My poor little feet could carry me, but he was such a great, strong man and ran so swiftly that I just knew I must be overtaken soon. At last, I felt him right behind me, his breath upon my neck. Then his arms encompassed me and, well, I screamed. I'm, I'm so very, very sorry to have disturbed you all. You didn't disturb me, I'm sure. I slept like a top all night. <laughs> I'm so glad. How about you, Mr. Singh? I'm afraid I'm very hard to awaken, mademoiselle. In my country, one is taught from childhood how to compose oneself completely, both the mind and the body. Oh. Uh, and you, Mr. Armitage? Huh? Oh, uh, no, not at all. I fell asleep working out a chess problem. McKinney's number 40. No, I slept very soundly, thank you. Really? I saw in the Times last evening that McKinney's going to give a lecture at Helms tonight. What, Dr. McKinney, the American? Why, there's no other brain in the world like his. I've been wanting to hear him all my life. Then why don't you go? Oh, may I? Really? Why, that's splendid. I might stay the night with old Jerry Stoddard, too. He lives at Holmes. Yes, of course. Well, then I shall. I'll check the trains and I'll telegraph Jerry the moment we've finished. Hmm. McKinney's number 40. I'll ask him to explain it himself. Well, if you'll excuse me, I must get to work. When the post comes, will you bring my mail to my room, Lucy? Yes, sir. Why do I? Still waiting for word about your play? Uh, yes. Uh, but I'm doing another in the meantime. Ah, that's the spirit. Our stage of today needs new plays, too. Why, even the pantomime's gone to pot since Mrs. Armitage left it. Now, Mr. Reynolds. Oh, I mean it. Why, well, I can remember seeing Sinbad the Sailor in Bristol 20 years ago. And the principal boy's legs. Oh, please, Mr. Reynolds. Did you ever do any straight parts, Mrs. Armitage? Oh, no, just pantomime and musicals. That's where Mr. Armitage and I met when we were playing Little Red Riding Hood. Well, I had no idea you'd been an actor, Mr. Armitage. Rather a poor one, I'm afraid, but uh, I admit I did once play in Charlie's Aunt. One of the greatest successes of all time. What part? Oh, the aunt. The aunt. Sylvia, dear, you'd better see what groceries are needed over the weekend. Mr. Brunlow will never finish his play unless you leave him alone. Pardon me? And how are things with you, Mr. Reynolds? Oh, fairish, I should say. Only, uh, collections are slow and I don't like being kept waiting. What on earth's the matter? Nothing, ma'am. Do you call breaking all those dishes nothing? It wasn't my fault. Well, then whose fault was it, may I ask? Well, has the cat got your tongue? 
I just said it wasn't my fault. I don't care whose fault it was. It'll come out of your wages. No, you can't do that. It's all I got coming. It'll be all you ever have coming in this house. I'm tired of your insolence. Your month's up tomorrow and out you go. For me. What I meant was, we've got to get... I thought I'd never find my book. It was right under my pillow all the time. Have you read it? I'm afraid not. I don't get much time for light reading. Oh, but this is so deep and fine. Let me read you just one passage. Here it is. At the finish, when he who has known love but lost it renounces the world. This then, Brother Francois, is the end. Here is peace. Here, through the window of my cell, comes only the skylark's song to rob my soul of its tranquility. This is peace indeed, peace everlasting. Exquisite, isn't it? Yes, yes, very pretty. It's sublime. I have to return it now, but I'll tell the librarian to hold it for you. Very kind of you, I'm sure. Goodbye. Goodbye. What's the matter? I've got to talk to you, Joe. I've got to. What's the trouble? It's my nerves, Joe. I'm half crazy because I never know what's going to happen next. Oh, well, that's all. All? It's enough to drive a person mad. Oh, why won't you tell me what it's about? Oh, Stella, don't start that again. Surely you know by now that I'm not going to run you into any danger. How do I know? I don't even know what happened last night. Last night? It was almost dawn when you came in and... I certainly are nervous. I can't help it. I'm sure I'm being spied on. I feel I'm being followed by unseen eyes. Whose eyes? I don't know that either. Oh, Joe, I'm going to break completely. I'm going to... Steady now. Use your head. Tell me, Stella, how long has it been since we made this arrangement? Oh, about ten years, I'd say. And it was you who suggested I should buy this house in the first place. Yes, I knew I was through on the stage that Tom hadn't any money. Nevertheless, you turned to me and I helped you. All I asked was to have one room to use whenever it was necessary for my business. Oh, but you really cared for me then, Joe. I still care, but I don't think you do anymore. Of course I do. Anyway, things have worked out all right, haven't they? You made a bit of money and I've done fairly well myself. Yes, but it's how you've done it. That's what worries me. There you go again. You know what killed the cat? Oh, it's not just curiosity. It's fear, I tell you. When I think that Sylvia's growing up, I'm terrified she may find out. Hmm. I should say she's too busy making a conquest to bother much about anything else. Oh, if you mean young Mr. Bromelow, he seems a nice enough chap, but not very successful. Hmm. He can still afford to take her to the theatre every Saturday night, can't he? You mean the cinema? And they usually get back about 11, I believe. So they should be out of the way by midnight. Oh, I knew something was brewing. I won't stand it, I tell you. I won't permit it. You must, Stella. This is important. What is? This, this deal. It's something different, something big. And if I put this one over, it's going to be my last. Will you promise me that? I'll give you my word, if you'll help me. How? By seeing that Sylvia and young Bromelow get to their rooms as early as possible tonight. How about Miss Snell? Oh, she's never up after 10 o'clock. Tom? You heard him say. He's going to that lecture at Helms tonight. Splendid. That accounts for everybody. And you get to bed early yourself. And sleep as soundly as a kitten, too. You don't trust old Joe, don't you? I try to. Give us a kiss. What is it, dear? 
Well, I'm looking for Jerry Stoddard's address. I've got to send him a wire. You know. Oh, well, your address book's upstairs. I'll get it for you. Mm -hmm. What time does your train leave? Oh, in about an hour's time. I ought to be leaving for the station. Armitage was right. You were listening. Suppose I was. I had good reason. I wanted to hear what he had to say about me. You flatter yourself. Why should we discuss you? You mean she don't know? What on earth are you talking about? About you and me. If that's what you thought, I'll ease your mind. Mrs. Armitage knows nothing whatever about you and me. I thought that was why she gave me the sack. Anyway, she did. So what are you going to do? What can I do? I'm only a boarder. That's what you say. I think different. What are you hinting at, you little fool? Oh, I don't know. I wish I was dead. Just imagine how you'd feel if you were kicked out in the street without even a shilling. Hmm. Unpleasant, I'd say. Unpleasant? Is that all? Well, let me tell you how I feel. I'm fed up. I'm sick of being worked to death and kicked around. And I'm tired of broken promises, too. I never promised you anything. Oh, yes, you did. Promises I never even asked you to make. So now you've got to help me. Stop that row. I've given you more than you deserved already. But you can't let me down now. You don't dare. You threatening me? No, I'm telling you. Then I'll tell everyone else. Then you'll go to jail for attempted blackmail. You've still got a few things to learn, young lady. Yes, I suppose I have. There's something strange about you and this old house. What's that? There's something queer going on here. Now I know you were listening. What did you hear? Nothing honest. I swear I didn't. I thought you'd heard I'd wring your neck. I didn't. You talk too low. Then let this be a warning to you. Keep your mouth shut about me and everybody else around here. Now get out. All right. I'll get out. But I'll not forget, neither will you. Because I'm homeless and desperate now. And all because of you and that woman. And so whatever happens, you've only got yourself to blame. Get out. idea of sneaking up on a man like a blasted leopard. Why didn't you come up to my room? I couldn't get away. Mrs. Armitage kept me. It was the housemaid I saw coming out of here. What if it was? You've got more important things to talk about anyway. Last night, for instance. I'm still not certain that is more important. What are you driving at? You know our organization's rule to have no concern with women while engaged in this work. Don't be absurd. Lucy hasn't got enough brains to spy. She has ears and a tongue. She won't be able to use either of them here anymore. Mrs. Armitage has given her the sack. Which is just as well. Exactly. Now as to the box. I can only say that it is in a safe place temporarily. That's all I wanted to know. But it must be brought here tonight. What about the household? They'll be out of the way by midnight. Now I'll explain the delay to Mr. X. Of course, but I wouldn't explain to anyone else. That sounds a bit nasty, Ramsey. If you think I tipped anybody, you're mad. If you did, it's you who are mad. Hmm. I would be. If I chucked away everything, this will mean to me. Yet. There are always the enemy's rewards and favors to be considered. I've never even given them a thought. Then you are wise. For once, I knew a man who did. Yes? Yes. Then one day, his wife received a package. Its contents so shocked her that she lost her mind as well as her husband. Hmm. Well, I, I shan't worry about that sort of package. If you'll just arrange for the other tonight. Well, I'm on my way, Mr. Reynolds. And as excited as a child. Well, who wouldn't be? This is the realization of one of my greatest wishes. I envy you. It's seldom that even a small one's gratified in this life.
I told you to stop slurring up on me like that. We shouldn't be seen together anyway. You said everything was arranged. It's almost 12 o'clock. Mrs. Armitage and the old girl are coming up now. The maid went to bed hours ago. That writer and uh, Miss Armitage. They'll be in any moment. If they are not? Well, the car can keep on cruising till you answer its signal. Ah, oh, my! It's almost midnight. Not really. And the sunset is so gorgeous. Sunset? Oh, I'm sorry. It's this wonderful, wonderful book. It's just too absorbing. Oh, well, then why not take it up to bed with you? I think I shall. Elspeth Heroin has been driving the young man positively mad with jealousy. Then he suddenly snatches her in his arms and says, You tantalizing little devil, I have a jolly good mind to. Oh, dear me, what a sleepy little girl I am. Isn't it fortunate that tomorrow's Sunday? You'll be able to sleep late. Mm -hmm. And I think I shall be quite naughty and have my breakfast in bed. That'll be nice. Good night. Good night. Good night. Sylvia and the young man in. They said they'd be in early. When they do come, get them to their rooms right away. And if you should happen to hear a bit of movement on the stairs later on, don't worry. What'll there be to hear? Oh, never mind. Oh, Joe, I'm so nervous. You do promise this is the last time, don't you? Don't start all that again. All right. But this is the last time. I'm going to put a stop to whatever's going on for Sylvia's sake, no matter what I have to do. I don't like your tone, Stella. If you're trying to frighten me, you're making a mistake. Because I... <clears throat> Bread and butter. Bread and butter. Well, they left the light on for us. I promised Mother we'd be home early. Well, let's turn it off. She'll think we're in our rooms. You know, you look really lovely in the moonlight. Sounds like a Gilbert and Sullivan song. No, I mean it. Moonlight softens and subdues. Stirs one's emotions, too. Stop that prattle. Sylvia! Yes, Mother. Coming right up. Good night, Sylvia. Good night, Hugh. Going to work on your play? Not tonight. I'm not in that sort of mood. I feel more like... Strange. She didn't even look at us. She couldn't help having seen us. Do you suppose she was sleepwalking? One hardly puts on a shawl to walk in one's sleep. I wonder if she takes anything. What do you mean? Well, nothing. I was just thinking out loud. Maybe she's upset because she's been dismissed. Maybe. Poor thing. I think I'll talk to Mother about it. Sylvia, get to bed at once. Yes, Mother, right away. Good night. Good night, Hugh.
is gone. It's a trap. Whatever happens, they mustn't get it. What's the matter? Matter enough. Lucy's gone. Just walked out without even fixing breakfast. And there's no chance of getting anyone until tomorrow at the earliest. Well, I'll help. Then bring up Mr. Bromlow's tea. Oh, good morning. Well, I'm really relieved to see someone about. I've rung my bell a dozen times at least with no response whatever. I dare say that's true. Lucy's gone. Well, then that's why my tea wasn't brought up. Oh, she's an ungrateful little beast. But that's not all. Neither Miss Snell nor Mr. Singh are in their rooms. An elopement, do you suppose? Oh, it's most peculiar. Because I know Miss Snell was planning to have breakfast in bed. And Mr. Singh always sleeps late on Sunday mornings. They're probably both at Gretna Green right this minute. Oh, no, joking, Mr. Bromelow. I can't understand it. I can't get any answer from Mr. Reynolds either. We're certainly knocking loudly enough. Do you suppose he's gone too? Let's have a look and see. I can't. His door's locked. Let's try my key. Maybe that'll do it. Oh, oh yes, it will. They're all the same. That makes it simple. Oh, maybe it's locked from the inside. Let's well, see. It's just struck me. How's Sylvia? Oh, she's all right. She's bringing up your morning tea. Try and calm yourself. No, 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 he can't be dead. It is true. Oh, no. Never mind. Are you ill? There's nothing for you to worry about. He's had a shock. Shock? In there, Mr. Reynolds. What's happened? He was murdered. Who did it? That's not for us to say. Can you take care of her while I go for breakfast? Yes, but hurry. There's usually one on the corner. <laughs> Constable, come here quickly. Oh, I didn't do it. I swear I didn't. It could have been anybody in the house, but I didn't kill him. Where's the body? In that room there. <laughs> now, see here, Mrs. Armitage. You've just got to control this. Oh, I didn't do it. I tell you, I didn't. Of course you didn't. Now, relax. Relax? How can I ever relax again? How can I? Oh. Oh. Murder it is, and no mistake, sir. You got a telephone here? In the living room downstairs. I'll notify the inspector. But remember, you're all to stay right here where you are. Oh, did you see the way he looks at me? I know he suspects me. How could he? Be reasonable. I am reasonable. That's why I'm afraid. And you hurt my wrist, too. I'm sorry, but if I did... He was just trying to stop your hysterics, Mother. And you must be calm, because we'll all have a lot of questions to answer. Oh, questions? There. I am under suspicion, and you know it. Shh. It's 
inspector will be here presently. And while we're waiting, I'll take down a few particulars. But I'm warning you, anything you say now will be taken down in writing and possibly be used in evidence hereafter. Now then, who's the head of this here house? This lady here. Your name, madam? Stella Rosabel Armitage. Married or single? Married. Married. Your husband here? No. I see. Living apart, eh? There. I told you we'd jump at unwarranted conclusions. Nonsense, Mother. He didn't understand. Oh. My father was away at Helms for the night. He'll be back this morning. Sorry, Mum. My mistake, but no offence intended. You are, uh, Miss Armitage? Yes. I live here and help with the house. We take lodgers. Was the deceased a lodger? Yes. How long had he lived there? Oh, about ten years, I'd say. On and off. What was his name? Jo... Joseph Reynolds. Business? Oh, I'm not sure. Some kind of broker, I think, you know. Buying and selling things. Well, we'll look into that later. Had he any relations? No. I'm... I mean, I... I'm not sure. I didn't know much about his private life. Well, I'd say he was an ideal landlady, ma'am. You know, I had a landlady once. Only had her for two weeks, though. She knew all about me. If I'd have said another week, she'd have had me out. But not knowing anything about a lodger for ten years, that's quite a record. Do you doubt my word? No need for you to get up at it now. Now then, had he any uh, particular attachments? What do you mean by that? Well, was there any lady who might have, uh, you know... Oh, no. No, absolutely no. You sure of that? Yes. I mean, I don't know. I told you I didn't know much about his private life. Oh, why do you keep staring at me like that? I can't bear it. I'm being persecuted. I'll take her to her room until she's recovered. Well, she'll have to see the inspector later, you know. Of course. She'll be all right in a minute. Now then, may I have your name? Uh, Hugh Brumelow. B-R-O-M-I-L-O-W. Mr. Brumelow. One of the requirements of the Metropolitan Constabulary is a knowledge of spelling. I beg your pardon? Occupation. I write stories and things. Yes. Yes? Yes. What do you do for a living? Just write. Occasionally I sell something I've written. Oh, I see. Casual employment. That'll be the inspector now. Now, I'm in for you to come along, sir. I'm quite able to admit the inspector myself. Letting the inspector in. Isn't it dreadful? There's so much I don't understand. Mother's behavior is so peculiar. She's suffering from shock, that's all. No, it's more than that. If she knows something, she won't tell. That may be true. But it isn't guilty knowledge. At least nothing to do with the crime. No. No, of course not. Oh, we must just stick by her. Meantime, I'm going to do a little detective work myself, starting right from the top. You'll be careful. I will. Which is Lucy's room? One at the top of the stairs. Thanks. Sir, you know, names and addresses and such. I'll have a look at them later. This is Miss Armitage, the landlady's daughter. Inspector Gregg himself. I'd like to see your mother, too. She's lying down for a few minutes. And I look over the victim's room first. Right over there, sir. You feel better now, don't you, dear? Oh, I'll manage to face the inspector, I suppose. Well, you won't be alone. Everyone will be questioned. Yeah, but where is everyone? Where's Miss Snell, Ram Singh, Lucy? I want to see Lucy myself. Oh. She smokes cigarettes. Oh, yes. I've caught her at it several times, told her off to. Oh, and well, there goes my clue. May we come in? Please do. This is Mrs. Armitage, Mr. Bromelo, and this here is Inspector Gregg himself. Mr. Armitage is away, I understand. Are there any other lodgers? Yes, there are two. 
Ram Singh, an Indian student. And I'll now see him first. Only he's not here. Oh? Where is he? I don't know. He was gone this morning. And his bed hadn't been slept in, which is quite unusual. Well, the other lodger? Miss Snell, a maiden lady. She's always seemed very quiet and refined, but of course you never can tell. Is she here? No. And the odd thing about that is she'd asked to be served breakfast in bed and yet was gone when I went to call her. Does she, Mark? Both of them disappear at this time? Have they latch keys? Yes. Nip downstairs. Tell the boys to keep out of sight. To let anyone come in, but nobody out. Very good, sir. Now, how about the servants? Well, we have just one. I mean, we had just one. You're not saying she's disappeared, too? Precisely. I'd given her notice because she was sullen and insolent. Oh, that's her sort, eh? She was supposed to have stayed until today, but she was gone before breakfast. Said she had a headache last night and went up to bed. That's the last I saw of her. There does seem to be something queer about it. Maine, two lodgers disappear and the third one's murdered? Oh, I shall never forget the way he looked when we found him. He didn't answer my knock. Mr. Bromelow came out and we used his key to get in. Reynolds' door was locked, eh? That's right, Inspector. I opened Reynolds' door just as Mrs. Armitage says. Inspector, I've just been on the telephone. That all she bet on, Espedistra, he won. Won by six lengths, all by himself. What did he pay? Unfortunately, he was disqualified, so he didn't pay nothing. You want anything in the fourth race, sir? No. When was Mr. Reynolds last seen alive? I said goodnight to him in the hall just before midnight. Then he went to his room. Where was Miss Snell then? In her room. And the Indian gentleman? I don't know. And the maid was in bed? To the best of my knowledge. Oh, but she wasn't. Miss Armitage and I both saw her just at midnight. Where was that? In the upper hall. Miss Armitage and I had stopped to say goodnight. Lucy came down from the attic, crossed the hall, and went down the stairs. Where did she say she was going? She didn't say anything. She was wearing a shawl around her face and staring straight ahead. Most peculiar, fixed stare. She never even seemed to notice us. Think she might have had a drop too much to drink, perhaps? Oh, so that was it. I might have suspected as much. That's why she was so sly and sullen and smooth. Now, Mother, don't jump at conclusions. We don't know that. It's enough for me. She'd been drinking and got to brooding over some fancied wrong Mr. Reynolds had done her. And then she killed him. I don't believe Lucy could possibly do a thing like that. She'd have been able to see the knife that was used, too, when she was cleaning his room, because it always lay on his bedside table. That may be it. Nobody but a person under the influence of liquor or drugs or with a heart full of hatred would have been so vicious, would have stabbed their victim so many times. Oh, so many times. I didn't know that. How oh, ghastly, how horrible. Sorry, ma'am. I didn't mean to shock you. I shouldn't have spoken so frankly. Uh, circulate a detailed description of this maid Lucy and the other two lodgers at once. Somebody's coming. <laughs> Just a moment, please. You're Miss Snell, I believe. Yeah, you don't seem to understand, Miss. This here is Inspector Gray. Oh! You can't do that there, here, you know. It's all right, Miss Snell. It's just that something unfortunate has happened, and the inspector wants to ask you some questions. That's right, Miss. Now, if you'll give me the name in full. You needn't be nervous, Miss Snell. Just one or two simple questions. I'm sure you'll be able to answer them quite satisfactorily. It's the law you're trifling with, Miss. You must answer, you know. Unless you're ill. Is that it? Are you sick? Has she got an impediment in her speech? Not that I've ever noticed. Quite the contrary. Maybe she doesn't want us to know our full name. No, that can't be it. Because her name is on her cards. Phoebe St. John Snell. Yeah, but she's got to answer for herself, miss. Perhaps this will convince you how serious it is. There's been a murder committed in this house. Mr. Joseph Reynolds was stabbed to death last night. He's lying in his room right now. As stiff as a mackerel. Perhaps that'll make you speak. We know you've nothing to hide. She had nothing to do with this awful thing. Oh, you can't be too sure. Still waters run deep, you know. Now, will you answer for the last time? If you don't, I'll have to take you to the station. <laughs> Good 
great Caesar's ghost. May she? Oh, yes, certainly. <laughs> Poor dear. Well, what's it all about? She woke up early this morning and got a guilty conscience because she hadn't been to church for four Sundays. So she decided to go to early service. Well, well, go on. Well, she got to the church door and suddenly realized she'd forgotten her tea. You used to speak to me, I believe. Yes. Watch out for her now, Inspector. She's got her snappers in. Your Phoebe St. John Snell. Actually, it's Phoebe Marcia. Sinjin Snell. I usually omit the Marcia. Too many names seem a bit pretentious, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Inspector Gregg is doing the thinking around here, miss. What time did you retire last night? Just before midnight, which is rather late for me. But... You didn't notice anything unusual last night? No, nothing at all. Only... Only what? I had such a very vivid dream. I was bicycling through Spain, and the Prime Minister of all people behaved so unconventionally that I... Yes, 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 but nothing that concerns this case. No. Well, did you notice anybody about this morning when you left? No. Not the Indian gentleman, or...? That may be Ram Singh now. It is. Are you Ram Singh? Okay, Mr. Bromelow. You might have been killed. Landing on top of him broke my fall. <coughs> He's coming around. Now the boys bring a stretcher. Very good, sir. <sighs> my leg. It's broken. You should be glad it wasn't your neck. Now perhaps you'll answer my questions. I've done nothing to answer for. Your actions upstairs hardly support that. I was nervous. I'm a foreigner and not familiar with your police methods. Well, you'll have a chance to learn now, because Mr. Joseph Reynolds... Don't you believe him? He would say anything to save himself. He hasn't saved himself. In fact, he's... he's... trying to, though, if he accuses me. Yet, this was all his idea from the beginning. Was it? I can prove it. I'll tell everything. I'll turn King's evidence. Oh. So you do know something about our laws, anyhow. Now then, where were you last night? Here until midnight. Then when the box arrived, I, I went to get Reynolds. But his door was locked and he didn't answer. Why? That's what frightened me. I thought he'd gone and tipped you off that the money was here. I see. And this box? I took it away again. You don't think I'd leave half a million pounds for a rat like Reynolds, do you? Half a million pounds? Where'd you get it? I'll ask the questions, Mr. Bromelow. Oh, I beg your pardon, only it seems such a huge sum. It does. Where'd you steal it? I didn't steal it. It was sent here to be used for the cause. Oh, so that's it. Foreign money. Bank of England notes and gold. That's it. Don't you see? English money drawn from banks abroad. Because if anyone would throw that much here, it would be reported, and the government would check to see what it was used for. Sabotage. Exactly. That's it, isn't it? Let Reynolds tell you. Reynolds will never tell anything. He's dead. Dead? He's upstairs in his room now. He was murdered. When? How? Those are details that we expect you to supply. I can't. I never saw him after the box came. And he never told you about it. He never told you anything. You trapped me. Perhaps I did trap you. But you trapped him and killed him. No. No, I didn't kill him. I swear I didn't. That may be true, Inspector. If he'd committed murder, would he have returned here? Here, here. I here. told you to leave the questioning to me. Sorry. Now, as to your organization. I'm through talking. I just want to know what Lucy the maid had to do with it. Nothing. We don't employ women, and we're on a strict orders not to have anything to do with them. In fact, this, I had to remind Reynolds of that yesterday. Why, Mr. Reynolds could never be involved in that way, I'm sure. Nevertheless, Lucy was with him in here yesterday. I heard her mutter as she left. She seemed terribly upset. 
She said she'd show him and make him feel sorry for everything, too. Oh, you shouldn't talk like that about a man who's dead, Mr. Singh. He's not talking about him. He's talking about Lucy. And now that she's disappeared, I'm beginning to think... That's it. Lucy killed him. I told you she was threatening him. And she seemed absolutely insane. She always was a sullen sort. Probably had murder in her heart all along. Oh, come now. You're just jumping at conclusions. I'm not jumping at anything. It's as plain as the nose on your face. And that's plain enough, I must say. How dare you? I won't stay here and be insulted. I'll go to my room if I may. Good riddance to bad rubbish. Oh, there's other rubbish to get rid of here too, Mrs. Armitage. Don't forget the disgusting food you serve. And the lumpy beds. And other things I'm too much of a lady to mention. As for me, I shall leave this place as soon as the police will allow. Now, what could she have meant by that, I wonder? Seemed plain enough to me. It's as plain as the nose in your face. Surgeon will set your leg as soon as you get to the hospital. Be careful now, it's the left one. Wages. I was afraid I would tell. Tell what? Did he kill Reynolds too? I do not know. But he would kill anyone for... <laughs> Take him to the station. See what they can do for him. I'm going to. I'm not going to stay in this, this slaughterhouse another minute. <laughs> Well, we know who killed poor Mr. Reynolds, anyhow. I'm afraid I can't agree with that. The sailor was wounded by a skilled knife man, such as Ram Singh probably is. But as I said before, Reynolds was killed by a frenzied novice, which brings us back to Lucy once more. Well, I still don't believe she did it. No woman bent on murder would ever parade around the house and show herself to everyone who happened to be up. Just prove she's mentally unbalanced. She got past thinking about herself. And why did she wear a shawl? You think she'd rather be hanged than catch a cold? Oh, you writers always try to build a mystery into everything. Mr. Armitage is back, sir. Show him in. Dad! Stella, they tell me what happened. They think I was away when you most needed me. It's all over now anyway, Tom. But who could have done such a terrible thing? And why? Lucy. Lucy? Killed Reynolds? All the circumstances point to her, Mr. Armitage. Poor girl. She must have gone mad. Quite. Now it's to your own movements. Mere matter of form, of course. Oh, I stayed the night at Helms with a friend of mine, Jerry Stoddard. We'll have to verify that, sir. Yes, of course. You'll find him at 39, Marine Terrace. Now, Mrs. Armitage, I'd like a more detailed description of this girl, Lucy. You needn't bother Mrs. Armitage, Inspector. You can judge for yourself. What's that? Just take a look in there. For hours, I'd say. Oh, Lucy. Oh, how perfectly awful. How'd you come to look in there? Oh, I don't know. Just idly curious, I suppose. Well, that clears up the case, anyhow. I'm not surprised she committed suicide. I fancied the river. You're sure it is suicide? Naturally. She was an hysterical type, we know. She'd killed a man and she couldn't bear to think about it. Look at this, Inspector. It was him who made me do it. I warned him, and perhaps he's sorry now. But whatever anybody says, he drove me to do this awful thing. Lucy Timpson. Well, we don't need anything else, that's sure. 
The doctor's here, sir. He's gone up to Reynolds' room. I'll be right with him. May we go to our rooms now, Inspector? Certainly. Yeah. We close up this room until the doctor's had a chance to examine her. Uh, may I have a look at that letter, Inspector? Trying to make a Sherlock Holmes out of yourself, are you? Oh, I just want to see the effect of a stereo on the handwriting. Well, go ahead. Only hurry. That's strange. She starts with, it was him made me do it. The word it starts with a small i. Well, she was just an uneducated girl. She didn't know any better. And that isn't the real reason. Look at this paper. It's half a double sheet with the front torn off. What does that point to? Probably found the paper in a waste paper basket. Tore off the side that was written on. When are you through? Would you care for a little drop of something, Mr. Armitage? We've all been through a rather trying morning. Uh, yes, yes, I'd be glad to join you. No more than two fingers, Mr. Bromelow. You'll be charging yourself with the crime. <laughs> 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 you know, I think Lucy's note was only part of her letter. The last letter of a suicide who wanted to disgrace the man responsible for her death. That's quite likely. Yet there isn't much point in disgracing a dead man, is there? Well, only perhaps to justify her killing him. Even so, why should she destroy the part of the letter that named him? What's your idea? Someone found that letter after Lucy was dead saw the chance to pin the murder on her and tore off a part to make it read accordingly. Rather far-fetched, I'm afraid. Especially in view of her mental condition, which you say you noticed last night. That, I think, was a deliberate attempt to mislead us. To make us think we saw Lucy getting ready to kill Reynolds. While Lucy was dead at the time. I don't quite follow you. I'm afraid, Mr. Armitage, you don't want to. What do you mean by that? Who in this house could have impersonated Lucy? Well, there are three women. There's Miss Snell, Miss Sophia, and there's my wife, but surely... I think it was still another person. Someone who'd played such a role before. A role such as Charlie's aunt. Are you accusing me? Before I actually accuse anyone, I'll ask you to explain this. I found it on the floor of the sitting room, in front of the cupboard where Lucy's body was hidden. You always carry your little chess set with you, even on such a trip as you took yesterday. That's true, Bromler. It's also true. I killed Joe Reynolds. But in heaven's name, why? Well, I discovered that he and my wife are in love. When did you find that out? Yesterday, just before I left to catch the train. I saw him kiss her. Did they see you? They didn't know I'd seen the kiss. For a time, I managed to hide the shock. I carried on as usual. Automatically, mechanically. And then the thing got me. What thing? Oh, jealousy, jealousy. A monster who kept shrieking to me to kill. And then it softened and began to whisper a plan. I followed it. I went into a shop and telephoned Jerry Stoddard. He was a lifelong friend. I knew he could be relied upon for anything. Your alibi? Yes. And then I paced the streets for hours with that monster always by my side. Then I came back here. You were all at dinner. I hid in the attic across from Lucy's room. Hours later, I crawled out. Lucy was already dead? Yes, and that's what gave me the idea. I changed into her clothes and pulled her shawl across my face. Then I showed myself to you and Sylvia. But why, after you killed Reynolds, did you move Lucy? Oh, you see, Lucy died before nine, and I killed Reynolds at midnight. I thought perhaps the doctors would be able to determine the exact hours of their death. But you knew she would be found eventually. Oh, I planned to take her away the first opportunity. And even if she were found, I thought the letter would perhaps cover things. Oh, it felt like hours carrying Lucy downstairs. You see, I'd used up all my strength on Reynolds. I felt like collapsing. But I'm glad I killed him anyway. No, no, Tom, what are you saying? Dad, it isn't true. It can't be. Yes, Stella, I'm afraid it is. But no one would have ever known if it hadn't been for Mr. Bumler. You! How could you? Be quiet. Someone's coming. Ah, so here you all are. Just wanted to tell you the case is all cleared up. Doctor pronounced the girl a suicide. Poison it was. And of course, we know she killed Mr. Reynolds. So that's the formal verdict. Unless our friend here has made some new and vital discovery. Well, 
Well, speak up. You're not going to confess you did it, are you? No, I'm not. Well, look, you're not trying to cover anybody else, either. No, Inspector. That won't be necessary, because I did it. And that's the answer to everything. Oh, Tom! What on earth are you saying, man? Just that I killed Joe Reynolds. And Mr. Bumlow can prove it. If this is a joke, I warn you, anything you say may be used in evidence against you. I'm taking you to headquarters. You'll come along too, Mr. Bromelow. Yes, sir. I won't be a minute. Sylvia, I'm sorry. I'd have given anything on earth not to have had this happen. I know you. You'd even have protected him if he'd let you. But how would it ever have been possible for you to do such a thing? That's very easy to explain. It's just that I had the best and sweetest reason in the world. Oh, you. And so Hugh turned to Sylvia, and his smile was as eloquent as his words. I think I have the best and sweetest reason in the world. Well, that's the story. Hugh, it's wonderful. I only hope no one's offended. I had to dramatize a bit, of course. Oh, naturally. You certainly made a very unpleasant character out of me. Oh, Dad, where have you been? I've been over at Helms with Jerry Stollard. Hugh just finished reading us his latest story. Oh. It's a shame you missed it. Oh. He made you a terrible killer. Huh. He did, did he? I'd like to kill the man who invented this chess problem. You made me out quite a lad with the girls. How many times do you say Tom stabbed me? Twenty-eight. Cut your throat a couple of times, too. How does a man smoke with his throat cut? And I resent your fiction that my teeth aren't my own. So just to prove it. Oh, I'm going to have a cavity. You better go and see my dentist tomorrow, dear. And I assure you, sir, that no one is more loyal to the Empire than I. It would do me grave injury if my name were to appear in your book as that of a traitor. All names will be changed before publication, I promise you. I'd like to have my name in a real book, Mr. Yu. You would, would you, Lucy? Well, we'll keep it in. Maybe use your picture as a frontispiece, too. <laughs> what will my young man say? <laughs> you didn't give me much to do. I want to talk to you about that. Excuse us. <laughs> Sylvia. Do you remember that promise you made me? Of course. But that was only in your story. Well, I'd like to have you make it again, now. Why not? You mean it? Certainly. Well, I'll make the announcement right now. But wait, there's nothing to announce. That promise depended on a play, not a book. Well, I know that, but it's going to be a play. I only wrote it as a book first because it gave me greater freedom of action. But how do you know it'll be produced as a play just because you sold it as a book? Because everything Dwight Winston writes is produced. Dwight Winston? Yours truly. You're Dwight Winston? But why should such a successful playwright come to a little lodging house like this? Well, for two reasons, my dear. First, to get color and characters. Second, to find a wife. Oh, you... I'd be hurrying. We've still got time to get a license before the registry office closes. Oh, but I can't go like this. She covered. I need a hat. That's all right. Come on. <laughs> Mike, you are in a hurry. Yes, I am. Yet maybe we should pause for just one more minute. <coughs> Excuse me, Governor, but I was looking straight ahead, sir, and I didn't see a blooming thing. May I be forgiven? Oh, I wish I was 50 again. If a buddy meets a buddy coming through the raw 